Welcome back everyone to another tutorial. Today I'm gonna make a small upgrade system for our game. Uh, firstly, of course, in each Metroidvania game, you can only probably jump and then you need to collect upgrades. And of course, if you collect the upgrade, there will be cool particle effects and a funny sound. And then all of a sudden you're able to wall jump. And perhaps if you grab more upgrades, you can then double jump. So all the abilities which we've created thus far. And by the end of this tutorial, you will have learned how to make this simple script and how to access your play controller with other scripts, as well as creating a particle system with a trigger function and some sound effects. So let's get right into it. So we're back in our scene and let's start to do a couple of things. Let's first make a folder and uh, let's call it prefabs because we're going to need it. And we're gonna make one more folder and let's call this um, sounds because we're also gonna add some sound this time. And we're gonna make a couple scripts as well for the upgrade system. And let's already make those. So let's create a C sharp script. And it's, it's important to get the name right on the first go. And let's make two scripts for each upgrade. I mean, let's make one script for each upgrade. So we'll make two scripts, one for the double jump and one for the um, wall jump. So let's say upgrade, wall jump, wall jump. And let's try to make one, make one more C sharp script. And let's call this upgrade, and double jump. So now we have the scripts, we will make them in a bit. I have some power up sound and what I also have is some artwork and there is a power up and there is a power up animated and I also gonna add a shoe upgrade just for fun I just found you know a different picture and we're gonna make those uh, in a second so let's start with that let's get the easy stuff aside so for the power up um, you can just drag in the power up here I suppose and what I can do is add some components. Um, with the, or actually, I can just drag these components in here. The animator. Uh, and I believe this already is fine. Yep. So if I start to play now, I think the power up should already work just like that. As you can see, there is a power up now. Of course, it uh, doesn't do anything. Right, and then we also put in the shoes upgrade and perhaps uh, what we can do is that we put those on top here and they're a little bit big. But let's, let's just put them 0 0.5. Um, so there are some cool shoes. Of course, you should be adding some particle effects as well uh, once you pick up the, the shoe. And uh, let's call it, let's call this one the wall jump upgrade. And let's call this one double jump, double jump. There we go. Normally I would put them somewhere else, but let's just put them uh, here and here for the sake of testing. Right, and now we're gonna add, of course, some topics. Uh, let's add here a um, collider, a circle collider. And let's make that a trigger. That's of course important. And we can have it like that. Um, the same, we're gonna add here a circle collider. Uh, there is a trigger, let's see it. That's fine, it doesn't need to be big. There's no need to have any rigid bodies on these topics. And let's go into the scripts and add the script then as well. So for the double jump, we're gonna add the upgrade double jump script. And for the wall jump, the upgrade wall jump script, whoops. Let me minimize this there, not to confuse anyone. Um, and this is the wall jump. There we go. Good. And what we're going to start off with is, first of all, going to the play controller, because what we want to do is access the play controller script and change then the amount of jumps and also the Boolean if you can wall jump, yes or not. So what we're going to do is public int available jumps is currently one. 
and what we want to do is a static public int available jumps is one and the public bool can wall jump is currently true let's put this first of all to false yeah and we also going to make this one static yeah now because these are static i can access them by other scripts so any other ability i'm going to add here on forward and i if i want to manipulate them by other scripts i need to add this static right after that let's open now first the double jump and and also the wall jump and i'm going to start off with the wall jump um, and pretty much they're going to look the same and there's just one line of code which is different of course you can also make a a manager of upgrades but i mean in metroid there are only so many upgrades so you can you might as well dedicate a script to each upgrade and also then manipulate um, the different topics in there so first of all i'm going to remove all these things we're not going to use them and i want some things uh, to know beforehand first of all i want also a part particle system to know that i triggered uh, let's say the upgrade and have some sound and some particles so let's make uh, public particle system system and let's call it uh, upgrade effect there we go and we also want a public public transform and this is the player position so i want the particle effect to spawn at the player so that's fine then we're going to make a function here which is then private void and now we're going to use the famous on trigger enter on trigger enter to d collider to d collision that's that's actually fine and what we could do from the start is that we only want to have the player be able to collide with this upgrade especially if we're going to make enemies later so we have to do then a if statement first if and then do we do collider dot whoops dot tag is player of course if it's not player in your case then change it accordingly uh, and then we're gonna make a function in there and what we can do in general is of course is put a debug to make sure that it's actually working debug log and then you can perhaps type uh, upgrade triggered so that's always important just to have uh, and there's an error because this should be a small c and here i should also write just collider collision was also fine but now it, now it relates the collider with the collider dot tag is player so that's fine and we have a debug and now now you will see that because i made in the play controller i made some statics if i write now player controller it also shows up here and then i can do dot and then you can already see available jumps or can wall jump and this is the wall jump so let's do can wall jump and then we just say is true All right that's that's perfect and what we can do now here and the moment i i initiated i can instantiate instantiate which is like creating an object and i'm just gonna create an upgrade effect which i mentioned here earlier and i'm gonna put it on the player position there we go and then close it and while doing so i'm just gonna destroy game object So there you go. This is already the, the, the line of code. And what we're going to do now is just take this part of the code, because it's upgrade wall jump. I'm just going to go to upgrade double jump. I'm just going to, going to change that. And instead of can wall jump here true, I'm going to say available jumps two. And of course, I can also add three or four or five. And then let's save these two scripts. So we have the upgrade for the double jump and the upgrade for the wall jump. And in the play controller, we added the statics. Now let's see 
first of all, what happens, because if we now go here, you can see that I still have to drag in here the player, first of all, and also a particle system, and the same, of course, here. Now, what we can do shortly is just make a very quick particle system and also make a prefab out of this. That's why I made the prefab folder. So let's shortly do this. And let's go to effects, add a particle system, and oh, let's just uh, make something quick and dirty. Um, I don't want it looping. Duration is five. Start lifetime. Let's do one. Um, Oops, not a curve between two, one to two, start speed, yeah, five is fine. Size looks too big, let's do the two, um, 0 0.2, um, start color, let's prep take two random, random colors. No, let's not take random colors, that sounds really bad actually. Let's do random between two colors and let's make perhaps one blue color. And one more purple color, something like this. And we want it to uh, be in the world space. Uh, emission, let's add a burst here. Let's remove this emission. Let's add three cycles, interval of perhaps one or two. Play around with that. Um, shape, it's now a cone. What happens if we do a sphere? It's like this. The sphere shape is obviously better. There you go. Um, perhaps the lifetime is still a little bit long, but uh, you can play with that. And yeah, let's just add some other things we think is important. Perhaps collision. Collision is always pretty cool. And make sure to add the world collision 2D. If I do now, you can see it's colliding. If I put it here, it stays then in there. That's pretty cool. I think the speed, start speed, could go a little bit faster, but that's okay. Rendering, let's put it on the player layer. That's also good. And perhaps what we could do is also change the size of a lifetime. And we're just gonna make, let's say, curve downwards, so they start big and then they, they they get smaller and yeah we can of course also blend them out but i think that's that's quite good as a particle system let's call this upgrade effect right effect and what we're also going to do here because this is the particle system and we also had a sound i'm just going to add the power up just like that and i'm not going to use any script because what i'm going to do is just i'm just going to play on awake once and done that's it for the rest, you can pretty much leave this. Of course, you can play around with 3D sounds and all these kind of things. But for this exercise, let's leave it like this. Let's leave it as simple as possible. Upgrade effect, wait. Um, let's put it at least on zero. And the transform topic, let's actually just reset all the transforms. There we go. Let's not have any issues there. And just uh, make a prefab out of that. Perfect. Let's remove it. And then wall jump upgrade. I'm just going to add the upgrade effect. And the double jump upgrade. We'll also add the upgrade effect. All right. So now we have both scripts done. Let's have a try. Let's have a look. So upgrade effect is the upgrade product. Well, player position. This upgrade effect is, of course, wrong. This should be the player. Uh, that's what happens if you work too quick and dirty. And the upgrade effect should be here and the play position there. All right, so let's shortly test. Let's put the wall jump upgrade behind me. So I first can demonstrate that I really cannot wall jump, which is important. So I'm here, I hit the wall, I'm like, oh shit, can't move on. And then there we go, I get the wall jump, a pretty cool particle effect. And now I can wall jump, as you can see, uh, but I, Perhaps I can put a platform here where I really need to double jump and oh, I cannot reach it, but there we go. We have then other and now I can do double jumps. So that's pretty cool stuff and quite easy to unlock your abilities. And I wanted to get it away uh, early in this series. In the next series, I want to show you then 
how to take the abilities to the next scenes or in between scenes so that when you move from one scene to the other scene that the abilities uh, or the upgrades which you have collected also remain with the player and of course for that uh, we'll probably have to rebuild the map a little bit and add one or two additional scenes to test it out but that's it for today thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next one